Oh, oh man. Uh -huh. Yeah, this thing helps hoist it up. So I, now I just need to move that <laughs> over here. You're oh man. Um, Yay! All right, I think I'm finally ready to do the wiring. So this video is gonna be for those who want a Flex Boss, but they are not quite sure they wanna spend the extra $2,000 to buy the Grid Boss. So this install is gonna be for my Flex Boss only, along with this really cool transfer switch here that acts as a bypass switch. So I can have my house running from the solar inverter here, or I can bypass it and have my house running on the grid here. Yeah, so I just got off the phone with Signature Solar Tech Support and they said having a bypass switch like this is definitely the best way to wire in the Flex Boss to your home if you don't have the Grid Boss. And that's mainly in terms of functionality. For example, we don't need to feed our electrical panel with a backfed breaker. The power from this goes right into the main lugs on the top of my main house electrical panel. And the bypass switch allows me to have power to my house if I ever want to like shut this down or shut the batteries down, maybe there's flooding, I can just switch it back over to grid and my house will run on grid and I can work on the system here. And this transfer switch has been really nice, especially in my case, because I've been testing various different inverters. So hopefully this flex boss will be around for a long time. So one of the downsides of wiring it this way is there's just a lot of wires involved in equipment. It just takes a little bit, it just takes a lot longer to wire. So that's exactly opposite of the video I did last week where I had uh, this Flex Boss right there and I just did it in you know 30 minutes with $20 in wire from the store. And that used a backfed breaker. So feel free to check out that video. And in the description of that video, I left some resources on how you can determine how much you can backfeed into your backfed breaker and also what size of breaker uh, you would need for your system. Now backfeeding into the breaker as shown in that video, it is a little bit limiting in that you can't power everything in your house when the power goes down. But I did do another video where I use uh, what's called line taps. It's a little bit different than this type of system, but I will leave a link to that video at the end of this video. Okay, let's jump right into this wiring we have here for this. Now, I can't really take credit for this uh, build or this wiring here because this is came from Engineer775. This is, he's got a YouTube channel. This is uh, how he does his wiring for his Solarks. He installs Solarks. But, uh, so I just, I'm using the same setup that he's using. 
<clears throat> so this is a uh, transfer switch here. I'll show you what we got. Careful. All right, so I have these, this switch here. So see the, the main center lugs, <clears throat> those come down here, go down, and they feed into the top of my electrical panel. So my electrical panel will either receive its power from, if I pull this up from the top position, the main electrical panel will e either receive its power from the top uh, wires here, which is the grid wires, or the output of the uh, flex boss hooks into the uh, bottom lugs here. So if I wanna go to solar inverter, I move this uh, switch down. And then if I wanna go up to run my house on the grid, I will go up. And then I do have this big bus bar here and I could have ran my neutrals into this as well. But so, so there's three different lugs for three different neutrals, but I kind of uh, did a shortcut. I just put all my neutrals right here instead of having to wire them all up into this small little box. Instead of connecting the neutrals onto that big bus bar, they're on this big bus bar. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the distribution blocks. So outside my house, I have my grid connection that goes into my electrical meter, then a shutoff, and I've interrupted between the shutoff and my main house electrical panel, I've interrupted the power and I've just sent that grid power right here. So for my setup, it be, my grid would, came in here and really I, I just disconnected the lugs and then I added some Polaris connectors and I extended, I extended it down here and uh, the grid power comes into here. And from this distribution block, basically I will be distributing the grid power. So I have uh, part of the grid power coming up here into these lugs. And then I also have power of the grid power coming over here. And this will power my grid here, my input here. And I have this shut off here so I can uh, turn this off and then I can work on these wires here and they won't be live. So, and then the output of the inverter will come out here and it will feed into the solar inputs. And then I, when I move the switch down, it obviously makes that connection. And then the load input will be feeding the main house electrical lugs on the top there. So let's uh, first just hook up the grid real quick. For that, I'm just gonna connect my ground. So, so uh, all this metal from this box, this box, this box, all this metal is all connected together with the ground. I'm not sure why there's two ground bars. All right, I have my red on my right. So red is always gonna be L2 here. Okay, let's look up, hook up the uh, load side. So I've got the load neutral, I'm gonna connect right here. <clears throat> now my grid, remember this neutral and this ground goes out to my disconnect near my main house, near my electrical meter. And that has, has a ground neutral bond over there. And so that ground neutral bond comes all the way up here. So the output load also has a uh, ground neutral bond as well. So I don't need to create a ground neutral bond because I already have one. All right, we'll hook up the load black here, L1 and L2 for our load. Okay, let's go ahead and hook the battery cables up. Two uh, positives, two negatives. Yeah, I need to get some ferrules for these. They said uh, it's not required, but uh, it'd be nice to hold everything in place. People use a zip tie to hold these down, but could never get that to work properly. This is pretty good though. Grid, okay, that's the right direction. 
This is for L1. Okay, that's right. This one's for L2. These will uh, help me help measure my uh, interaction with the grid. Sunny day, so I gotta get this thing connected. I'll just I don't think I'm going to use these spirals. They just come off. Oh, yeah. I might need to shorten these a little bit, but those are going in all the way. And uh, I need to torque everything down here. And uh, this one is coming loose a little bit because it's moving. So I need to put another couple straps right here so it doesn't move when I move these wires. So I'll need to tighten this down a little bit more. Oh, shoot. All right, guys, I screwed up. I must not have had my torque wrench set properly. I'm not sure what happened, but I, ha I was cranking it. It, was, it felt a little bit too much and this popped, popped right off. So this torque wrench goes from like five to 80 foot pounds. And uh, this uh, requires 93 inch pounds, which is seven and a half foot pounds. So I think something was just off with this when I was tightening it and it ended up popping it. Just look at this one more time. Yeah, so that's seven and a half foot pounds. Yeah, I was cranking way tighter than that. So that is definitely my fault. Dang it. Dang it. I thought I had it right, but dang. So I hope EG4 can just send me a replacement part. But I did go to the store and I think I can still make it work. So I got picked up this. This accepts a number two wire, which is what I have for my uh, AC load. I think I can just pull that off. Uh, if you uh, do this yourself, uh, don't make the same mistake I did. <laughs> Dang it. I think this still might work though. Just mount. Mount that right there. That's what it's for. So, hmm. Oh yeah, that's solid. Yeah, that's seated in there good. Okay, I think we are good. So I have a screen for this, but I think I'm just gonna worry about that later. Um, so I set up the Wi-Fi dongle earlier and uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. So there's no battery breakers. So breakers to the on position here. We're just gonna have battery power only to this. So let me just turn them on one at a time. Connecting to the cloud. Sweet, okay, I think I should be able to log on and see configure this. So I was able to log on to the web portal that they have here and I just changed everything back to default settings and then I did the firmware update. So after I did that, I told this uh, inverter that I had EG4 lithium batteries and then I could see what my charge percentage was of my batteries. And then I went out to my solar array and I turned on the solar and I uh, turned on the solar right here. And then it was charging my battery. Okay, the battery is right about 35%. You know, I think I'm just gonna turn it on so it will run my house. Okay, so before I switch this over to run my house, hopefully everything will be okay. I just want to include a link. I'll have a link in the uh, description below or a QR code here showing a test spreadsheet of a bunch of different types of inverters, the 12K, the 18K PV, the NHX inverter. You can see the different prices and some of the specifications. And I also have discount codes to various different distributors, including, you know, EG4 units and uh, Signature Solar. Also in the description, I will include a bunch of one-line diagrams and other diagrams showing different ways that you can wire these 
uh, inverters into your house. Okay, let's go ahead and turn it on. So I'm just going to turn on grid power. So it should be running grid through there. Just gonna verify that we have our 240 volts AC coming out here. So yeah, we got 240 volts coming out. So I'm just gonna turn on, turn off everything in my house except for these garage lights here. Whoops. Okay, let's uh, switch it over to the inverter here. Yay. <laughs> All right, so we're back on. I'll turn on everything on my house again real quick. Okay, it's uh, running my entire house, so it's good to be back on solar because I've been off solar for a few days now, so that's awesome. So the batteries probably are not gonna last through the night, but that is okay because I have grid, and so it should automatically switch to grid in the middle of the night. And when the sun comes up, it'll get me back onto solar again. But we will be testing this in the next video, most likely the next video. So let me know what you want me to test on this thing. So we'll do some load testing, some unbalanced loads, surge. Um, let me know what type of testing you guys want me to do for this. Uh, I'm going to scout camp this whole next week. But um, after that, I'm going to be testing this for you guys. And here is the uh, wiretap video I did earlier, if you want to watch that. But uh, thanks a lot, guys, for watching. I will talk to you later.